I was wrong about the 3 nanometer A16 for the iPhone 14. In yesterday's show I covered the reports that TSMC's 3 nanometer process wouldn't be ready in time for the iPhone 14, the A16, SoC and presumably the Max M3 generation. And then some of you guys in the comments were saying that maybe they'd use a 4 nanometer process and I went through triumphantly saying, nope, rumour says 5 nanometers still. And yet, as I write this script, there's a little updated tag on the article on Mac rumours. Looks like 4 nanometers is the one. So, sorry about that. That being said, MacRumors cites Digitimes as the source of this report, so flip a coin and decide whether it's legit or not. So presumably we'll be looking at a cooler running chip with the same performance as M1, or a faster chip with the same temperatures, or maybe a fun balance in the middle of the two. Either way, it's nice to hear that there is an actual improvement coming next year. And speaking of Macs, those rumours about Apple moving to OLED displays are back, but only to say that the plans have been pushed back to 2025. Now, having seen how amazing the displays on the M1 Pro and Max Mini LED display panels are, it's probably not something that that many people would be so excited to get rid of, and, and it may still be that the issues like burn-in and uniformity of brightness are too much for Apple to overcome to their quality standards. But it has to be said, it looks like there's almost no bloom on these mini LED displays that Apple has put into the MacBook Pros, which is great. In a separate report though, Apple is actively developing micro-LED display-based products, which is a natural evolution of mini-LED displays, but with LEDs that measure less than 100 microns, and which can express primary colours without a filter. These displays are also around about 30% brighter than the current iPhones with OLED displays. It does also look though like the rumours that the next iPad Air might be coming with an OLED display were premature, it doesn't look like that's going to be coming at least next year. And given the shortages on iPads that we were talking about yesterday in the show, that might well be why we didn't actually get an update to the iPad Air last year when the iPad mini got its update with center stage and the A15 chips. But what do you think? Have you seen the displays on the new MacBook Pros? Are you happy with those? Would you prefer OLED displays? And is the bloom uh, noticeable to you on the new MacBook Pros? Let me know down in the comments. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button so that you can join my channel and be notified every time we publish a new video. And we're going to get into your questions. Alan B Unboxings and News asks, I gave answers. Do you think that Apple could transform the iPad, iPad Mini, iPad Air and iPad Pro into MacBook, MacBook Air and MacBook Pro? Now, I'm not really quite sure what you're asking here, but maybe... Um, it's about kind of combining them, I guess, so that we get basically touchscreen versions of the MacBooks. Now, I don't think that Apple is going down the, the touchscreen MacBook route. Um, I could be wrong, but it just doesn't seem like something they want to do. And I've always said that Apple does, doesn't really care about cannibalizing their own sales, but I do think that they want to keep a range of iPads as being their touch products and the MacBooks as being the more traditional keyboard and trackpad slash mouse. So I don't think it's about cannibalization, but just having products that work in the right way for the input method that you have. Using macOS with touch wouldn't be a great experience because a lot of things are very, very small, whereas using a mouse and keyboard with the iPads, well, you can kind of already do that with the magic keyboard and trackpad. Next up, the Fat Cyan Warrior asks, IK Vances, I never had a Mac, but I'm wanting to replace my HP laptop with one. My use cases vary on what my ADHD latches onto that week. Which MacBook would you recommend? And this is a dead easy one. If you don't have specific use cases that you very much need more performance for, or you specifically need a bigger display, then the MacBook Air is, uh, is definitely the one to go for. MacBook Air with M1. It's a hell of a little performant little beast. Um, the battery life on it is great. You haven't got a fan, so you haven't got to worry about uh, keeping the back of it clear. You haven't got to worry about removing dust down the line because it won't get in there in the first place. So yeah, that seems like a safe option. Performance, absolutely on par for what you will need. And Evan Rogers asks, IK Vances, can you do a breakdown of what you think pricing and config options will look like on the Pro and Max Mini? For example, 24 core cost, entry base cost, maxed out etc so really i think all we need to work out here is what we're uh, what apple is likely to charge for the base model which will be the 8 core cpu with a 14 core gpu the 16 core neural engine so what will apple charge for that well we have a couple of examples so we have we know that the current performance version of the mac mini comes in at 1099 um, so it's likely that it would be starting from about there but 
when we look at the MacBook Pros that have gone from 13 to 14 inches, they have gone up for $200 uh, for the starting point of the higher end MacBook Pro. So it's gone from $17.99 to $19.99, and I think we might see the same with the Mac Minis. I think it could be $13, uh, $1,300 $12.99 as a starting point. From there, I think all of the add-ons are going to be basically the same cost as they are with the MacBook Pros. So if you want to go up to the 10-core uh, CPU with the 16-core GPU, then you are looking at an extra $300. If you want to go up to the 24-core into a max territory, uh, then you are looking at an extra $500. And if you want to go to the full performance chip of the M1 Max, that's going to set you back 700 and then if you want to max out your uh, unified memory as well that's another 400 dollars uh, if you want to go up on the storage it's uh 200 dollars to double up to one terabyte 600 dollars to go to two terabytes 1200 up to four terabytes and $2,400 to go up to eight terabytes. And I think that's kind of all of the options that you're gonna get. So uh, we've had the memory upgrades. So let's do a little quick calculation. So this would be for the top spec M1 Max, 64 gigabytes of unified memory, eight terabyte storage. Uh, and we would be talking about for the MacBook Pro, 5,899. Now. We can knock off the fixed price difference of the Mac Mini. So we can take $700 off of that and we are left with a final bill of $51.99. So I think if you do want to max out everything, this is, remember, with 8 terabytes of internal storage, which I don't think many people would go up to. If we put that back to the original, uh, then you're talking probably $2,800, which is not bad. The, uh, the massive storage add-on did make a big difference to that. Um, but yeah, 2800 probably for the absolute max spec that you can get other than storage. And I think that's acceptable because it's very easy to hang some extra storage off the back of a Mac Mini. It's not going anywhere. So you can easily add more storage as you need it via Thunderbolt. Suffer Ablak asks... When do you think we'll get the M2 Pro and Max MacBook Pros? I remember you saying that they will update them annually, but I feel like it's more likely to be an 18 month cycle. And also what about two years? Is that in the realm of possibility in your book? I'll tell you why I don't think it's gonna be 18 months. Now, I understand that at the moment, things aren't coming out as quickly as we would hope, um, but I think that is more because of production bottlenecks than their intent to do it this way. The reason that I think that's what they want to do is because the cores are updated annually. Why would they then go to an 18 month cycle and have one set of uh, cores that comes out basically at the same time as we saw with uh, A14 and M1? They use the same cores in both. Both came out within a month of each other. Then they would go to having 18 months the next time. You're still gonna get your uh, A15 cores, which we got with Av Avalanche and uh, Blizzard uh, in September this year but then you're not gonna have any of those cores coming to the Mac for another six months, which just seems a little bit odd. And I know that's what we're actually having at the moment, but then you get to the point where on the following one, that's 18 months later, you've skipped a generation because a, genera a whole generation of cores has been missed out completely. And that just doesn't really make much sense. At the end of the day, it's important that whoever is looking to buy a Mac is going to be able to get one that is up to date whatever time they want to do it. I think doing it every two years, again, doesn't make much sense um, because Intel and AMD aren't going to slow down their chip releases just because Apple is. So they don't want to look like they're falling behind. If they can do it every 12 months uh, for pretty much everything in the range, it's just going to make a lot more sense because the cheapest new iPad is updated every year for the past few years. The last iPad Pro only lasted for 12 months. Uh, that was the A12Z version that came out in spring of 2020 and then got updated spring of 2021. Um, so I think we're starting to see that. I think, think we're starting to see that cycle come through now, but it is still taking a little while and there is still production on these new bodies for the MacBooks because I think Apple is trying to get out all new designs pretty much for all of the new Macs just so that feels new for Apple Silicon. And that is always going to add bottlenecks 
So I think once these are all rolled out and we've got all of our new designs, it is just a chip swap and it should be very, very simple for Apple. And Brian Data asks, I gave answers. Do you think Apple will have more CPU cores in M2 over M1? What about M2 Max and Pro? For the moment, at least, I think the CPU cores are going to stay pretty much static. I think we're still going to get our balance of four and four uh, Blizzard and Avalanche cores in the M2, the, the kind of regular version of the M2, for performance and for efficiency cores in there. Uh, I think the uh, neural engine is probably still going to be 16 cores. I think we're also then going to get probably more GPU cores. It looks like we're going to get 10 GPU cores in there with binning going down to either 8 or 9. And again, with the uh, M2 Pro and Max, I think we're going to get exactly the same kind of layout as we have right now with uh, 8 performance and 2 efficiency cores and then the larger number of GPU cores, depending on which configuration you go for. So that's my thoughts on it. I could be completely wrong. The only people that know right now is probably the ones that work in Johnny Saruji's lab. And that's it for today's show, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.